Today we will start with the implementation of an algorithm that is pretty popular in the world of procedural generation known as wave function collapse. This algorithm is a form of procedural generator that relies on the concept of entropy, which for our purposes will represent the amount of certainty that we have on the placement or identity of each of the tiles in our two-dimensional system. We will explain in just a minute how the algorithm works, but I want you to notice here how intriguing the visualization is. The reason why it is so appealing to the human eye is because we apply naturally very similar sets of rules when we want to generate similar patterns. These patterns can later be exported, mapping the information on the identity of each of the tiles into a strings that can then be imported for further processing in more complex or sophisticated engines like Unity or Unreal Engine. And that will allow us to generate three-dimensional views. However, using Python to prototype my tiles is always a first choice for me because an interpreted language is easier to process so that I can focus more on the identity of the algorithm and then implement it using uh, fancier methods. Let's take a look at the algorithm. Let's get started first with the introduction to the tiles of reference. Here you can see the nine different tiles that will compose our visual pattern. Let's take a look at the first one. This tile contains four different sites. We're going to call them as R, D, L, and U. We can also call them 0, 1, 2, and 3, representing the particular factor by which we will multiply 90 degrees in order to complete a rotation in that direction. For example, 90 times 0 will give us the original orientation of our tile. If we multiply 1 times 90, then that will give us a result of 90, representing the rotation of a tile facing down. So let's focus on the right side, and let's encode the three different colors in which this side is divided. We'll simply call them B for black and G for green. Let's continue to the next one. We're going to start at the corner in which that particular direction begins. This will be black, black, and black. So let's write them here in the form of a Python list represented as a list of strings. We have B, G, and B for the first side, which represents the right side. Then we have three Bs. And the next one will be the left side. This one is represented from this corner as black, green, black. Notice that I am not using separators inside of the strings. I'm just using the characters. And finally, we have black, black, and black. So this will be right, down, left, and up, which will be these three Bs. So let's talk about the algorithm. Here is a visualization of a simple two-dimensional grid. The identity of each of the tiles will be modified based on the rules implemented using the criterion from the wave function collapse algorithm. At the beginning of the animation, each of the Y tiles can have as potential identities every single one of the tiles of reference. So let's incorporate some certainty into our system. Let's collapse one of the tiles and give them an identity. It doesn't matter which one. But now that we are certain about the identity of one of the tiles, we need to take in consideration the identity of that tile when placing the neighbor. Let's focus on the neighbor to the right. How many possible identities can this tile have? What is its entropy? 
we will use as entropy the total number of potential tiles that it is able to take. The smaller the value, the better for us. Because it means that we are more certain about the identity of that particular tile. Keep in mind that in this system, it is assumed that for every combination of tiles, represented as the interaction of four neighbors, that are adjacent to a tile of interest, we will always have a solution or a tile available for it. If not, we can set a default value. So let's enumerate our tiles of reference, starting at the index 0 and ending at the index 8, because this is the right neighbor to the tile that has already been placed. We need to evaluate the, the left neighbor of this particular tile. And then we need to compare the sockets to see if they complement each other. For this one, it's black, green, and black. So we need a tile whose adjacent side on the left side starts from the bottom towards the top as black, green, and black. And visually, it is easy to implement. Let's go through the first one. Zero matches the expectations also does one, two as well, but not three, because we're missing a black sub area. Neither does four, nor five, nor six, but seven does meet the expectation, and eight is not a possible candidate. So the entropy of this tile is going to be four. Let's apply the same set of rules to the neighbor here at the bottom. For this one, for this one, we have as an option the item 0, and that's it. So the entropy of this tile is going to be 1. For any of the other tiles that are not currently colliding or adjacent to any of the tiles that have already been collapsed, the entropy of those tiles would be equal to the total number of potential tiles in the system, which is 8. This is the first step of the algorithm, evaluating the neighbors. Now that we calculated the entropy, we need to make a selection. We first traverse the entire two-dimensional matrix and identify the item with the smallest score. Once we have it, if there is more than one, we just randomly select one of those items with the smallest entropy. Notice that the entropy for the tiles that are collapsed is zero, so we don't count those. So for any small entropy other than zero, we pick the item. And once we have it, we make a decision about which identity, if more than one, this tile can take. In this particular case, there is only one tile that is a candidate. And so we assign the identity of the reference tile that index zero. Then we can repeat the process. Let's implement this using Python and Pygame. 